What's going on guys, Electrical Enthusiast here and welcome to the second part of the Arduino watering plant tutorial in which we're going to be discussing how we're going to drive the water pump exactly with our Arduino output. So you're going to be needing a couple of components for this part. So you're going to need a breadboard, you're going to need a BJT and or MOSFET. I'm using the 2N4401 BJT. You're going to need a solid state relay. Uh, once again, I'm going to be posting all of these images up on your screen right now. You're going to need a current limiting resistor for your BJT. I'm using the 220 ohm resistor. And you're also going to need a diode. So this is going to be a freewheeling diode which will protect the backlash uh, currents to our transistor. I'm also going to be using a battery pack. You may use a different uh, voltage source. You can use a bench power supply or you can use an adapter from your screen or such. And I'm going to explain to you a little bit as to why you need exactly that. And last but not least, you're going to need a water pump. So I have two over here. It doesn't matter which kind you have. You may have uh, a more powerful water pump. So you will need to size your parts accordingly. But I'm going to be demonstrating using this pump in particular. So let's have a brief discussion as to why exactly do we need all of these components in order to, to drive a simple water pump. So if you look at the nameplate in front of the pump, you can see that it uses 5.5 to 12 volts as the source and it consumes 1 to 3 watts. So through a simple calculation, we can deduce that it will be consuming on average about 600 to 800 milliamps. So the first limitation comes from the Arduino board itself. So if you look in the data sheet of the microcontroller, which is housed on the Arduino, which is the Atomega 328 PPU, you will quickly, quickly notice that the output pins are only capable of sourcing up to 40 milliamps. So let's take a look at a general purpose transistor. In my case, I have the 2N4401 BJT, uh, which is capable of driving a load up to 600 milliamps uh, based on the data sheet. Now, you may think that that's enough to drive our pump, and you would be perfectly correct. In this case, you should be able to have enough of just the transistor along with uh, some small components in order to drive the pump. However, for the purpose of this uh, tutorial, we're going to briefly discuss as to why you would need a relay and how to reapply this in your circuit. As I've mentioned, 600 milliamps, and let's take a look at the relay. If I turn it over and show it to the screen, you can drive a load up to 30 amps at 120 volts AC. So you can already see the difference between the two parts. So one is 600 milliamps, the other one is 30 amps. So that is a quite a huge difference. And um, to be honest with you, you should be able to find different BJTs that are driving uh, heavier loads, but the price will obviously adjust much quicker than a relay. So if you want to drive a load very easily and cheaply, the relay is definitely the way to go. The other two components that I have right here is a resistor and a diode. So why do you need a resistor for the BJT? So if you look at the data sheet, once again, the base is a uh, current driven input. So you want to limit the amount of current that you actually send to the base because once again just like the Arduino output um, the base would burn up if you were to send just an unlimited amount of current so you want to limit that current with a simple resistor so in, the, in my case I have a 220 ohm uh, resistor in my breadboard and finally the diode will go uh, across the BJT in order to protect it from the backlash currents and those currents are generated by our relay so what happens is inside is essentially you're energizing a coil which drives the switch or the actual actuator of the relay so when you energize a coil and you quickly release it there's going to be some current that's still propagating in inside of it so it may cause a current to go back into the transistor and obviously burn the pins. So let's put together our relay circuit. So as I mentioned, the resistor is going to go into the base of the transistor. We're going to have a relay hooked up on one side of the transistor and that side is going to be going to the high voltage side. So for my Arduino, I'm going to be using the VN pin. I'm going to be reading directly from the battery pack. Uh, it's going to connect to the relay. Obviously, the other side of the transistor is going to go to the ground. So once again, I'm going to be using the rail on the Arduino itself. The ground goes to the other pin of the transistor. 
last but not least we will have a diode in this circuit as well so what you need to pay attention to essentially you have a normal uh, high voltage going this way so you want to make sure that your transit your diode is essentially the reverse polarity of that in order to drive any backlash currents back uh, through itself and last but not least i'm going to be using a uh, simple jumper wire to kind of simulate an output of the arduino and i'm going to be using a 5 volts uh, which is what the arduino would normally output so plugging in our battery into the arduino and let's test it out so again i'm going to be connecting to the base through the resistor and is if everything's okay as you can hear my relay is clicking on the inside so hopefully you can hear the clicking but it is very loud and obvious so if you're not getting this um i would suggest checking number one your transistor make sure everything's connected correctly make sure you are using a correct transistor so sometimes you can get a p channel mosfet or n channel mosfet or uh again npn or pnp bjt so that could cause some of your issues make sure that you're getting enough current into the base and um on the second on on the last note um you can see that my relay from the data sheet is normally open and i am closing the relay by applying current through the resistor and transistor into it so that's the basic demonstration of how to hook up the relay again there's very uh basic connections i'm going to be showing them on the screen as you watch so hopefully you were able to get to this point let's assemble the whole circuitry i made a few uh, very simple modifications off camera to the circuit so number one being soldering leads to the load side of the relay and connecting the pump to the actual breadboard so just to explain what's going on over here treat this as a separate circuit so you have the pump which has two leads going one side goes to, through the power so that's just the power bus the other side goes through the two white cables and that goes back into ground so essentially when you apply a voltage or when you close the relay the white cables become a short circuit so all you have is essentially this uh, motor motor connected back to uh, power and ground so if I test the circuit, what I would be expecting is that if I apply a current, I should see our motor spin. So as you probably heard, the relay clicked in and I can feel some air coming out from this pump. We are now actually getting our motor triggered through the relay, through the transistor by a simple five volt output. So that means that we can now go back into the programming. We can go back to the setup and finalize everything that needs to happen in order to water our plant. So putting all the concepts that we've covered together, as you can see, I have the program from the previous tutorial, which has been slightly modified. So I introduce a uh, 13th pin, which is gonna be used for the output of the pump. I set up the pin to be an output. And last but not least, I checked that if humidity real, which as you remember is a percentage of the humidity read by our sensor is less than 90, we need to turn the pump on. Otherwise, so an else statement, we will turn the pump off. So as you can see, I've assembled everything. I have a very uh, small demo to run on my table. I'm going to verify the program upload it to the Arduino and one thing you want to note is that you do not want to be uh, uploading and or running while uh, the pump is uh, turned on so the reason being is that your relay and pump are drawing much more current than your USB port is able to provide so you want to make sure that you disconnect your pump and uh, as you can see in my case I have pin 13 just going onto an empty breadboard slot so what I'm gonna do now after I've uploaded the program I'm going to reconnect the battery which is able to provide enough current and remember that's being drawn through the VN and I'm going to connect my pump on the resistor so obviously right now the soil is not uh, the damp I'm gonna have my water pump running so our expected outcome is that when I'm gonna start pouring the water onto the soil uh, we're gonna reach the expected or wanted moisture level and the pump should hopefully stop so let's very carefully 
see that in action so I'm going to transfer it into the bucket and as you can see as soon as the soil sensor has read the appropriate water level it stops and again you can have your soil sensor set up on the other side for example at this point I'm running out of water for the demo but um, as you can see it works fairly well and the plant is completely watered so hopefully you guys were able to follow the tutorial build your own uh, plant watering system and make your especially relay system work if you have any questions feel free to post them in the comments down below and uh, make sure to check out the full uh, guide as well as all the software all the hardware that I've used during this tutorial on my website the link is going to be at the end of this video as always once again, thank you for watching. Hopefully you can like the video and subscribe to my channel and see you next time. Thank you. Bye.